Hello, hello, and welcome once again. J76NY here, and we are continuing with our douchebag playthrough on Suzerain. Big day in Whole Sword. We've got the uh, Supreme Court making a decision on the uh, Emergency Act. So hopefully this goes our way. We're going to read the report here. In today's press statement, Kizaro Kibner of the NFP showed support for President Reign after the court's decision to review the emergency decree. In his speech, he showed full support for the USB leadership criticizing Franz Richter and called for the Supreme Court to do the right thing. The Supreme Court has filed a 8-3 dissent and closed the Urson v. Swordland case today. Chief Justice Hawker dismissed the concurrence of the Ministry of Justice, citing that the Religious Harmony Bill doesn't prevent Blue people from practicing religion in any shape or form. Further press releases were made criticizing the words of the Vice Minister of Justice. Ludish constitutional rights won't be in question for some time. So far, so good. I was eagerly awaiting the decision of the Supreme Court regarding the Emergency Act. I stood up from my chair and looked out the window in my office. Peter was with me too. He was slouching on the couch at the right side of the office and staring at the ceiling. Day to you, Mr. President. Am I interrupting anything? Yes, you are. What is it? Chief Justice has sent you this. He showed me the wrapped object. Bring it here. He walked up and gave it to me. I immediately started to remove the wrapping to reveal a framed photograph. It was an old black and white photograph of Tarkin's soul posing on a destroyed tank at the whole sword square. The building behind him had thousands of bullet holes on it. To the side, a clearly readable slogan, Victory is Close, written on its walls. The date, March 14, 1929, was written on the corner with a black marker. Turn to Olivia. What did he say about it? Did he say anything about it? <clears throat> no, but he's obviously trying to send you a message. I, I love you, says Peter Vectern. Noticing Peter on the couch, Livia reddened slightly, gave a small wave, which Peter returned. Mr. Vice President, I'll be leaving now. As soon as she left the room, Peter came right next to me and took a look at the photograph. Oh, nice present. What do you think? Victory will be close, huh? Orso's getting ahead of himself. The emergency decree was tough on all of my team. We were constantly battling with an opposition against our security measures. Cooperating with the old guard had put me in a very fragile spot, which could backfire at me at any moment. Extending the decree and cooperating with the old guard had put me in a very fragile spot, which felt like it could backfire at any moment. Okay. You trust Orso Hawker? No. <laughs> so you expect your decree will be declared invalid? Nope. I don't, actually. I just hope he holds up to his end of the bargain. If they declare it unconstitutional, they may potentially try to go against you. We can't face that. Stop whining. Peter looked at me and then continued to stare at the ceiling. But maybe this period has lasted too long already. The opposition within our party is also growing. Ludish people are getting more discontent than ever. Bergier region is becoming increasingly volatile. The Ashraf anniversary will happen later this year. Who knows how that will unfold. Malianism is on the increase among the protesters. The fights are continuing despite our security measures. Communist theory is advocated by Kantan and revolutionary Leon Malianev. Uh, what are you saying, Peter? Maybe cooperating with the old guard was a bad idea. Suddenly we heard a knock on the door. Lucian came inside and bowed his head slightly. The court has made its decision, sir. They found the decree completely legal and ruled Mr. Richter's complaints invalid. Yay! Good for us. And a hell with them. 
Thank God. We have no obstacles left now. Let's show... F eh. I thought that said, let's show him who he's dealing with. Now we can start thinking about the opposition. They're starting to really provoke the people to go out and protest. It's really irresponsible of them to invite people to protest on the streets during an emergency. This cannot end well. Uh, let's wait it out. If the worst happens, the police would take care of it. We should target journalists that stir up unrest. It's time to detain Franz Richter. Hell yeah. I've been waiting for this. Ha! I've been waiting for this. Are we really going to do this? We still have the initial, the intel about him from Orso Hawker, too. That's true. He has proven connections to Arcasia and has tried to cover his tracks behind international trips for unknown reasons. <clears throat> we can justify his arrest, and the decree will allow us to hold him without trial. Antel Rock awaits him if we go through with it. He will pay. Take him down. As you wish, sir. I'll make the necessary calls. This is a big move. If there's nothing else, let's conclude the meeting here. They readied themselves before the door. See you later, Anton. They left the office. Dun, dun, dun. Fantastic. So no impeachment for me, at least not yet. Uh, Supreme Court rules emergency lawful. Supreme Court ruled that the declaration of a state of emergency within... With the president's reign emergency decree did not violate any of the articles of the Sorda's Constitution. Which it absolutely did, but whatever. In the verdict written by Chief Justice Orso Hawker, the court disagreed with Franz Richter and found that the emergency decree did not violate the rights of freedom clauses of the Constitution. The court defended the emergency decree, arguing that the Sorda state has, in fact, faced imminent danger as will not admit delay which justified the actions of the administration. Supreme Court defends the emergency, says the radical. Despite accepting the review to review Franz Richter's case, the Supreme Court ruled that the state of emergency is completely constitutional. The solace justices of the Supreme Court has once again stopped in front of change in peace, solidifying their alliance with President Reign and his administration. This collaboration between the President and the Old Guard dominated constitutional court is proving to be very dangerous. The ongoing state of emergency has already resulted in the arrest of thousands of sort of civilians, forcing thousands to flee and the country flee the country and hundreds of missing people. How long will this go on? But you're bitching. Or I'll have you arrested, sent to prison with everyone else. Today's press statement, Franz Richter criticized the Supreme Court for ruling the emergency decree legal, blaming the Chief Justice for protecting the President despite his illegal action. Keep running your mouth, Franz. In his speech, he called the Supreme Court to stop obstructing democracy and condemned both the administration and the soulless justices. He also said that the President must be held accountable for acting against the Constitution. By who? <coughs> we hang on. Lucian stood upright, holding a large folder of files under his arm. He bowed in acknowledgement. He looked exhausted. The cabinet is gathered in the White Room, sir. The Vice President will be opening the session soon. You can go in whenever you're ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Lucian held the door for me, and we both left the office for the White Room. When we entered the room, Peter was speaking to the cabinet members who were already seated around the table. As soon as they noticed me, they all stood up. Peter stood right next to my seat in the middle. He turned to give me a thumb, well, turned to me and gave a wave of his hand. And here's our president. He held out my chair for me to sit down and smile. Please. 
When I sat down, everybody immediately took their seats. Let Peter talk. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to discuss our current status and plan the remainder of our term. I know that some of you have had your concerns about our style of governance so far. There will be a time to speak up about these in the meeting today. Really? Why? But I must also thank you all for your hard work so far. We are very lucky to have a team like this. All of you have been invaluable to this administration. Nia and Kira grimaced at his results, his remarks. I get for trying to do this game when I'm half asleep. Having said that, now we have reached a critical point of our term. We are nearing the end. Sadly, and for reasons outside of our control, Swordland plunged into violent terror at the beginning of our term. It became our duty to save Swordland. We all knew it was an emergency. Today, the state of emergency still continues. Despite making some of our jobs harder, it has also helped stabilize our nation, which it actually has. My last playthrough, I was being nice about it all, and Swordland was a wreck the whole time. I will link to my first playthrough at the end of this episode. I must thank you, Mr. President, for being brave enough to act so swiftly. Thank you all for your understanding our predicament at this difficult time. Joseph was nodding in agreement while Nia and Kara whispered to each other. The emergency decree also gives the president the power to enact laws that are otherwise not possible. This will open the way for our long-awaited reforms. He glanced at me. Not in agreement. So let's start the meeting with a brief look at some reports. He fumbled with a stack of papers in front of him. According to the latest polls, people seem to be content about our administration. The public opinion has not changed much. The biggest concern of the people is the state of our economy. We are slowly slipping into a depression. It's only a matter of time until the people will be hit further. This will have dire consequences for our administration. This is the time to give the best we can. Ugh, oh, you crap. For this administration and for Swordland. Peter turned to me. I'll give the word to the president now. Start the meeting. Or I could have clapped. Slow clap for Peter Vector. First, I want to hear brief reports from each ministry. Let's talk about my plans moving forward. Uh, let's see here. It's time to focus on changing our party as a whole. I will add a new vision in our manifesto. Public opinion is concerning. We must focus on campaigning for the next election already. Uh, state of our economy is very concerning. It must be our focus to achieve quick economic development. Um, I'm not going to change our party. We do have to work on the economy. But public opinion is... Hmm. I could go with public opinion and start campaigning, but if the economy doesn't do any better, or does worse, God forbid, we can campaign all we want. Hmm. I'm going to go with the economy. Jordan needs to become an economic powerhouse. We can't get elected if we do not improve the economy. Like I said, there we go. Almost everybody seemed to be in agreement. There's no comments. Let's move on with the meeting. Next, I want to hear a brief report from each ministry. Peter gestured at Simon, and he immediately stood up. Mr. President, dear colleagues, the Vice President was pretty on point with his summary of the current economic status. He also used the word depression. Couldn't have been more correct. Our GDP has shrunk by 15% last year. This downward trend has broken our economy over the last years. If we cannot contain this in time... We will end our term, in the truest sense of the word, in a depression. However, this has not yet reflected well with our debt situation. Our total national debt has increased about 65 billion Swordish Ren this year. If we enter a higher deficit over the next years, we will face massive debt crisis, which could crash the economy. 
The Assembly is working on introducing new tax bills, which will generate more revenue for the government. These efforts will depend on the government deficit situation. On the other hand, unemployment has seen no positive changes. There has been an increase in joblessness. It is now at 26%. We have lost control of the situation. We caused millions of people to lose their jobs. Now would be a time to clap. I'm not going to say anything. They didn't give me the option to clap. So, One major concern is our nationalization decision. Our expenses have increased. And it did not send a very positive signal to the global and local market. I believe this will have a negative effect on our growth. Also, I have to say that the failure to open our first infrastructure project was costly, but we expect to see it finished in the next months. And you see down here, it is actually making a little bit of progress. But apart from all that, I'll finish with an update on our latest project. The manager reported that everything is going well and very fast with the Conrea Industrial Zone. I'll keep it brief for the sake of the whole meeting and end my report on that note. Concerns have been heard. Gus Manger stepped in. I'll also keep it brief, Mr. President. Trade deal with Wayland increase our agricultural exports from Berja. Our farmers are still suffering. Our ministry did its best by giving out subsidies to local farmers, but our agricultural production remains the same. Additionally, I bring good news regarding our investment. FC Anrica has seen a boost of ticket sales after your endorsement and participation in the club. The management decision to send over a slice of that pie decided. Is this really the best time to be talking about this? In a cabinet meeting? The manager personally thanked you for the support you have shown the team. Several players have already decided to join the USP. Money should be arriving in your account shortly. So I'm going to get a little richer. That's good. That was it. <laughs> yes, Mr. President, we can have a separate meeting to take a deep look at the numbers of the ministry if you'd like. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that's kind of what the point of this whole meeting was about. You kind of just went into my own personal business, you dick. Uh, yeah, we'll set that up. Gus invited the cabinet back in and sat down. Wait, they all left? Why? I didn't even know that. Oh, whatever. Moving on. Pascal Bennywall, who seems very cheerful all the time. Our state facilities require immediate attention. We are experiencing long lines in front of hospitals everywhere. We're also currently investigating some reports of a small polio outbreak around the village called Heimer. I believe we can get into more details in our policy meeting. These reports keep getting shorter. Well, they do. <laughs> Joseph stepped up. The Ministry of Defense has a very important report regarding our situation with Rumberg. The investigation showed that Rumberg was, in fact, weaponizing rebels against our state. We have learned that they have been aiding the Bluish rebels in Wayland too. Our military must stand ready for any possibility, possible attack coming from Rumberg. We have gathered intelligence regarding their military research and production. They are building a massive army. We urgently need to increase our own military production. We cannot let them threaten us like this. Do it, bro. David Wissey stood up. Foreign Affairs. Our Secretary of State. Perla has agreed to begin deal notion. Who the hell is Perla? Cooperation between Wayland and Swordland has increased to a new level. However, we are seeing its negative impact on Lesbia. I don't even remember who I'm going to be going to trade with. I don't really care. Whoever gives me the best deal. The region is very unstable. With the incidents at Rumberg, Wayland, and Helgeland, we must be very cautious. We can talk in more detail at our foreign policy meeting. Concerns have been heard. Kira Waldo was next. Our ministry is working day and night to improve our education system and increase its accessibility. 
doesn't mean we are not plagued with problems. You are already aware of those. Lily has suddenly stood up. Uh, Mr. President, there is an important report from our intelligence officers. Why didn't you go first, then? We have disrupted the radio signals of several active Bluetooth Freedom Front militants in Bergia. There seems to be some sort of preparation going on. Our forces managed to eliminate 22 militants. They were carrying Rumberg-made KA-74s. Lastly, Mr. Richter was arrested and transported to Antel Rock prison facilities today among heavy protests. You might need to implement some new measures soon. We will provide you with more detailed report at a later date. Oh, also, Mr. Greisner had a report for you regarding an investigation you wanted him to look... Who? Oh, him. All right. I don't remember what he was investigating, but I'm sure we'll find out at some point. One last thing. I would like to transfer the gendarmerie under the Ministry of Interior to improve the internal security efforts. Uh, see Joseph accepting this. Well, he just might have to agree if the president of Swordland tells him to. The Ministry of Defense shouldn't be meddling with internal security affairs through the gendarmerie. Not sure I agree with that. It's my own way of doing things, kind of. <clears throat> anyway, we had several incidents where they were too violent too quickly, and it stems from military officers giving reckless orders at times. Uh, might be necessary if the security situation gets more problematic. It will eventually cause a problem between our forces. There are already miscommunications going on. Will you transfer the gendarmerie to the interior in the future? I can't make that promise. That's unfortunate. He smiled faintly. Do you have anything to share, Miss Morgana? She shook her head. <laughs> Not at this moment, Mr. President. You are already well aware of what's going on. So be it. I believe that's everything. Everybody packed up and left the white room. I went back to my office. Carl Greisner was waiting for me by the door. Can I have a moment of your time? I have something to discuss. What's this about? It is classified information regarding our investigation, sir. It would be better if we talked inside. Okay. What's this about? I'm listening. Secret State Police has compiled a report regarding the active investigations. We have been watching the oligarchs closely, just as you ask, and found a very complex web of connections. Ooh, the oligarchs. They are missing links in our investigation, but the oligarchs seem to be involved in huge cases of corruption and lobbying. No, you don't say. And recently there was a major power shift to Karanti. I know, I caused it. Even though so many links lead to Karanti, we couldn't find a direct incriminating evidence yet. Currently, we're following a trail that leads to Estord, which will hopefully and finally get us Karanti. I didn't know we were going against if we have to take him out, we have to take him out. That's all there is to it. We also have another suspicion. Our findings led us to believe there might be some connection between the increasing illegal arms trafficking in Eastern Macopa and the oligarch. Really? <clears throat> if we decide to proceed with our investigation, we can potentially uncover a lot more. Keep going. I'll give you an update soon. We'll also send you the detailed report of our previous findings. Thank you for your time. I'll be waiting. The last two and a half years had gone by so fast. Personal wealth increased. Sweet. Always good to get a little richer, despite everything else that's going on. Uh, what's next? Brazirin. 
Thousands of Bluedish people have gathered in protest and called for the resignation of Governor Braun and President Rain. Well, they can go fuck themselves. Governor Braun reported that certain groups within the protesting crowd vandalized shops and public property, and the regional police force intervened. According to the report of the police, the group dispersed, but hundreds were wounded. Police are also said to have found in 11 illegal Rumbergian made pistols in the crowd. Rumberg really needs to stop dicking with our internal affairs. Oh, that industrial zone's doing nice, isn't it? Gonna overpass, overtake the railway. I should have gone with the. Yeah, whatever. Can't change the past, right? Especially when there's no saves coming in this game. Uh, this is a report from the whistleblower. Agent Hailstone has revealed intelligence about a secret, secret nuclear weapons program developed in Rumberg. Our intelligence has verified the details relayed about the heavy water facility in the north of the kingdom and a ballistic missile test site. Uh-oh. That's not good. Address the nation speak. Oh boy. Thought it'd be fun. Try and pump them up. Lucian and I walked into my office in the Maroon Palace to make my address the, to the nation speech. It was unusually crowded today. Cameras, lights, and microphones were set in place, and the crew was standing by, ready to start filming. I'm ready. I'm always ready. Here we go. Like Bismarck, I always have a plan. And if you could tell me what that reference is from, Bismarck always has a plan. If you can tell me the reference, you will win nothing. Except my admiration. How's that? Good, I think the crew is ready. As soon as you take your seat, we can go live. Ugh, I don't fall asleep first. I took my seat and rearranged my notes on the desk as a crew member powdered my face with a cotton puff. <laughs> Do you do anything about my head? I'm pretty bald. After everybody was ready, the director gave the sign to start filming. I looked directly into the camera. My fellow swords. Oh boy. I soared to election on the winds of change. Change that was desperately sought and called for you by you, the people of Swordland. And I delivered nothing. We'll skip that one. I took office with a plan to lead Swordland out of a recession and into greatness. Still not happening. When I took office, I hoped to lead Swordland into a new era of peace and prosperity. Hmm. Oh, the... Well, they called for change. I gave them change, just not what they called for. So we'll this one. Uh, but I was forced to lay aside my aspirations as the country faced an unprecedented emergency. But you know what they say about the best laid plans. But before I could change Swordland, Swordland itself changed drastically. I'll go with this. Blame. Everybody but me. My inauguration was marked by a brutal assassination. Even as I was sworn in, tensions skyrocketed between the Red Youth and the Young Swords. We'll blame the Bludes. There we go. That's a good one. <coughs> extraordinary times called for extraordinary measures, but my opponents couldn't see that. My calls for unity during this time of strife went unanswered by my opponents. Even worse than the bloodshed were my opponent's attempts to use it to tear me down. I am going to go with that one. And I stand before you today stronger than ever, which is absolutely true. The court's defeat is proof that our current state of emergency is more than justified. I am stronger than ever. And richer. I do not take my new power lightly. Every order I give is for the sake of the country. I know you are counting on me to restore law and order in Swordland, and I will do so with all my might. Having vanquished my enemies within the government, I shall now turn our... <laughs> hmm. Turn my attention to our real foe.
There we go. We'll go with this one. There are those who seek to tear Swordland apart from within, but together we will beat them. I alone can eradicate the threat of blue separatism. I alone can eradicate the communist scourge. As God is my witness, I will protect Swordland from those who seek to destroy it from within. We'll blame the blue. I will defend Swordland against our enemies abroad. I will continue to show Rumberg no mercy. Or United Cantana. I will not let foreign conflicts distract us from the terror in our own backyard. Faults. Uh, I don't really want to single either one of these. But I kind of want to... Kind of do, actually. I could just kind of blanket statement it. Like that. I will continue cleaning up the economic mess my predecessor left me. All this while bringing Swordland back from the depths of reception. Oh, I mean, I didn't. So, I'll blame Alfonso. Alfonso and the Bludes. Who should shoot a fly away from my forehead? <laughs> I've not forgotten the promise I made when you elected me. When I was running for president, I made you a promise. And I hope I will I have fulfilled it to your satisfaction. I swore to improve Swordland's military. Even with all that's been going on, I succeeded. True. I'm not lying. I'm not lying in any of these statements. Uh, I thank you for standing by me, your president, both in good times and bad. I'd like to thank my wife and children who will hate me. I'd like to thank my vice president, Peter Vector, for standing by me. I'd like to thank my chief strategist, Lucian Glad. Uh. Well, Lucian's always been there. I mean, Peter has too. But... Or what would happen if I... We'll find out. Thanks, Lucian. Couldn't have done it without you, bro. Hey, Morgana, Westcore, Vector, and Sista. Director gave the cut signal and the cameraman stopped filming. Speech was finished. Surprised we don't have new, uh, ton of shit to read here. President to restore Swordland to glory. The recent challenge to Anton Rain's state of emergency does not seem to have phased our president. In his much anticipated address to the nation, Rain brushed off the court case as a momentary setback and vowed to keep. Oh my lord, it's not even close to what that is. Read it yourself. I'm running out of steam here. Anything else we have to attend to? Not now. Oh wait, there is. Gang violence diminished. Police chief of Estord reported that the local police forces have finally eliminated one of the biggest money-making schemes of the Coronelli. According to the report, over the last month, 40 mob members have been arrested along with three high-ranking members of the Coronelli. All right, so we're taking a bite out of the mafia. All right. We will continue on to the next turn in the next episode. Hope you guys like this one. It was really productive. It actually very made, made me very happy to see the Supreme Court siding with us. Uh, we're going to have to do something with the oligarchs soon. It's looking like uh, our buddy Karanti may uh, feel the wrath of rain soon. Uh, if you like the episode, hit the like button. If you have any thoughts on the game so far... Leave those in the comment section down below. If you want to follow along through season two of our Swordland adventure here, hit the subscribe. Might want to do that because they just announced a new upgrade or DLC or both. 
and it's going to add a whole lot to the game for whatever suzerain has in store for my channel in the future so come along with us hit that subscribe day 76 ny saying thank you very much for watching and have yourself a very good day